Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will go through how you build workflow links. In this case, I'm going to use the example of a procedures document library where I want people to be notified. So I've created a workflow that sends emails to me. And for now, it's just an empty email with the name of the new procedure. But of course, I want the recipient of that email to interact with the information. And therefore, I want to build links in that email. So that's what I'm going to be showing here. There are lots of different workflow links. So I'm going to start with simple ones, like uh, showing the properties or the tagging or the metadata of the document, uh, editing those directly, going into version history, going directly into the document in preview mode or edit mode, setting an alert on the item, and then going into the workflows page, the current workflow status, and finally, start a workflow. All right, let's get started. So the first one we're going to do is the document column value, so the metadata with tagging. So let's go into that. Let's close this window here so we can get them side by side. And then we're going to build a link, and that shows doc properties. Just doc props works fine uh, for me. So I'll just build a link for that, and I'm going to pick up the current site URL. Of course, you could um, hard code this, just type in the current site URL, but that means that if something changes, if you do a migration, save as a template or something like that, then on the site this will not work later. So to get the current list name, I have to put a space in there, because if I, if I don't have a space and just add another lookup, it will edit the current one. So I need to do a space so that the SharePoint designer understands that I want another one. So I want the list name here. And then, of course, I want to remove that extra superfluous space because I don't want any extra space in my URL. And then I'm typing in the um, hard-coded part here, and that's the forms, uh, this form dot ASPX. ASPX. Of course, be very careful when typing this because any little error will cause problems. Yeah, and then we're sending the parameter of the ID and getting the current item ID. Let's get that. ID, oops. Current item and then the ID. That's the one we want. Let's just test that out. And usually when I do workflows, I do a lot of testing. I test every step because uh, when you're doing workflows, it's very easy to make a mistake and it's very hard to troubleshoot. So I try to uh, test as much as possible while I'm building. There's the workflows. Click on that. And I'm going to kick you uh, off this notify email workflow. And that should give me an email here in my mailbox. And if I click that, then I get the doc props there. So let's open that. And that gives me the document properties of this document. So the next step is, of course, to send the user directly into the edit properties um, so that they can input their own tagging metadata on that document. And of course, you see this link is exactly the same as just edit form ASPX. So that's the next one we're going to show. And of course, I can make this process a bit uh, faster by copying. So let's do that and just do uh, edit docs properties, doc properties. And as you see, uh, I want to edit the text to display up there. Edit doc props. You saw I, I got here the about. Of course, I don't want that in my link. So I want to remove that. That happens sometimes when you copy a link. Then, of course, I'm going to change this, this form into edit form instead. All right, that looks good. Otherwise, it's exactly the same thing. So I, I will skip testing that one now. I think I got that one right. Next one I want to show you is the list item column values. So here I'm working with a document. If I was working with a list item instead, it would be almost exactly the same. The two differences, first, the, you need to hard code the lists part of the URL there. You need to type that in. Uh, if you're working on a non-English site, that will be translated. So that part of the URL URL will be translated, so it will be listor, for example, in Swedish. Also, uh, the lists do not have forms 
um, subfolder, so you, you don't have to put that part in there, or you need to remove that. Otherwise, it's exactly the same with the disk form and the edit form ASPX. And then you're just sending the ID. So the next thing I want to show you is the version history. That one is um, slightly different. So let's start from scratch on that one. Version history. Of course, version history is a very powerful thing. So I really want to invite users to see the version history on the document. So we're building the link and we're getting the context, of course, the current site URL. And then we're uh, typing in the underscore layouts. Be very careful when typing this because any little mistake will cause the link not to work, of course. ESPX, and then we're sending the parameter list, and we're picking up the list ID, not the name this time, but the ID. And the list ID, like that. And then another parameter is the file name. And then we're sending the server relative URL of the current item. There we go. All right, that's the version history. Let's do another one before we test. The document preview mode. This is the rather tricky one. So let's do that one. The preview mode only works in SharePoint Online. It's a rather new feature and it shows the document in read mode. So that one is a useful one. Let's copy a bit here because we can Save a bit of time on that. So first part is the same. So doc props, which is not what we want to show here. We want to be do read doc. And again, we got that about thing there. Let's remove that. And then we have the, you know, the, the, the site URL, the list name, that's fine. And then we do the forms, that's fine too. And then we want to do the all items ASPX. And you might recognize this because this is the default view on document library or a list actually. So um, if, if that has changed, if you've changed the default view name or if you've uh, removed it, then of course you need to change this. So it needs to point to an existing view. Items, there we go. All items ASPX and then we're sending the ID. And notice that we're sending the ID twice here is kind of strange and we're not actually sending the ID we're sending the uh, server relative URL and we're sending it both in lowercase ID and in uppercase ID I've messed with this a lot and that seems to be the one that works so uh, don't ask me why that happens but that's the way it is ID there we go and then the server relative URL again all right so now we're sending the parent also Parent equals current site URL and current list name. Again, we're doing that from the context. And then um, space, remember, to get them to um, get the other one, the other lookup. And then removing the space again, of course, in that too. So now we have two new workflow links that we want to test. We want to test the version history and the read doc. All right, let's do that. Publish that, maximize the browser, start the workflow, go into my email, delete the previous one. Here's the new one coming in. Excellent. So there we have the version history uh, and this one, the read doc. Let's try that one. And um, there we are. We're going into preview mode, which is fine. That's where we want to go. The next one is if we want the user to actually go directly into edit mode on the document. So let's do that one too. And to build that kind of link, it's slightly different. We are pointing to the current site URL and the layout doc ASPX. And now we're just providing the source doc. Notice though that this providing the source doc, you really need the GUID for that, but it redirects with the server relative URL. Also the downside uh, well, we can't get the GUID. GUID is not possible to get in a workflow. You can get that through code, but uh, not through, through the workflow. So if you change the file name of the document, then of course the server relative URL will change also. So let's do edit doc here. Build a URL for that. That's not what I want to do. There we go. 
this is the one we want. Build a link. And we want to start with the current site URL. And then we want to type underscore layouts 15 and then doc ASPX question mark source doc equals and then we send the server relative URL. Then we're done with that one. All right, let's do another one before we test. The new alert is of course a really powerful one. And it's almost the same, it's pointing to a document in layouts here. So we can copy that and build the URL. And uh, it's not gonna be edit doc, it's gonna be new alert on doc. That's what we want, one, right? So instead of the doc ASPX, we have the sub new. Of course, this is a subscription. That's what it's called internally, but it's the alert. That's what it's called in the UI. So sub new ASPX, we're sending the list uh, parameter. And that's the list ID we want there. And that's from the context. And then we want the current item ID. So we're sending that also, ID equals, and the current item ID. There we go. New alert on doc. So we have two of those new ones. Let's test. Maximizing the browser, starting the workflow. Notify email, kicking off that workflow, and going into the mailbox, clear out the old one, the old notification, there's a new one. The edit doc, let's test that one first. Oh, I did a mistake, I did ASXP. All right, let's do that one. Um, PX, of course, I told you to be very careful. There we go. ASPX, there we go, directly into edit mode. Perfect, that works good. Uh, and then back to the uh, email. So the new alert on doc, same thing. I did with, when I copy that, of course, when you copy a mistake, it becomes two mistakes. There we go. So there's the ASPX. There we go. Slightly small mistakes there. There we go. Now I've got that new alert. So let's fix those errors. Bear with me here. Yeah, there we go. ASX, ASPX, of course. Okay. Um, here's another one. ASXP, that's not PX, that's what we want. All right. I don't want to test those two again. Uh, trust me that those work now. It was just that typo. And now we're getting back to the um, next one. New alert, we've done that one. Um, the next one we're going to do is the workflows page. Rather simple. So now we, I think we can copy this and just do that one. Paste. And this is not an, uh, this is the workflow page. And then we are um, modifying this. It's not the sub new. This is the workflow now, ASPX. And we're sending the list. Uh, that's the same name, the list ID, and then the current item ID. So that's exactly the same. So the workflow ASPX, that should work. All right. It's done with that. Should we do one more? Yes, let's do one more. All right. Let's, uh, this one is similar too. So we'll just copy that one, and modify that link. Uh, layouts, and this it would be the work stats, WRK stats.aspx. And then we're sending the list ID, and we're sending the workflow instance name. And then we're adding that from the workflow context. 
This is, of course, very useful if you have a long-running workflow, so you want to see what has been happening in that workflow. So if you're doing updates uh, or you're creating tasks, stuff like that. So that's powerful. All right, let's test this now. The workflow page for current item and the workflow um, status page, that's the one we want. So it's the status page for the current workflow. That's what we just did. So we have two new ones to test. We're publishing. And let's kick off the workflow again. Here's my email, gone with the old one. There's a new one directly. So let's do the workflow uh, page for the current item. Um, that's that page. Yes, here we see the, the workflows. We've been running that workflow quite a few times now to test these. And the start status page for the current workflow. That seems to be working also. The new um, notify email was completed at this time, so working great, excellent. So we're done with quite a few of these workflow links now. Let's see, uh, I think that's actually it. Let's go back to my presentation and see if I got, forgot something. There we go, status page, yes, there's just one more workflow here. Uh, and that's when you wanna start a 2010 workflow. I won't do a demonstration of this because it will not work on a modern site. I can't show this in this site. And this demonstration is rather long as it is, but this is the syntax for starting a 2010 workflow. So for this one, you need to copy the template. So the, so the template ID is the workflow template ID. So the best way to, to get this is to actually click on the start workflow button and then copy the template ID from the existing URL. So that's how you do that. For a 2013 workflow, it's slightly different because the 2013 workflows do not have a starch page unless you add a parameter to it. So I've done that. Let me show you that, how that's done real quick. Let's save that for now. Procedure here is I have an initiation form parameters. So here you get to supply your opinion of the procedure uh, when you start a workflow. So if you have one of those, then you can uh, go ahead and send a link to starting that workflow with parameters also. Uh, there you get the current site URL as usual, and then you have this workflow service URL that you have to type in, and then you need to copy the workflow server GUID, easily done also from the web page where you start this, and then type in the workflow init form, ASPX, and then send the list ID, the current item ID, the item GUID also, and then you copy the workflow template ID, and finally supply this workflow for equals one parameter also. This is where you would go with that link. So we would start the review procedure and input your data on the procedure. All right, that concludes this rather long demo. Thank you for watching.